All right. Um, oh, your bonuses, Humpty Dumpty. Uh, Cal, I, I was reading, and then the last couple words I couldn't really read, so there's that. Um, Chi Chi, Paige, Nicole, Liz, Tristan. So tell me what those words are. The correct words. Huh. Skylar, Taylor, Trevor. And some more pieces and disorder. What is it? More pieces and disorder. What does close mean? Not a plus one. Sorry. Can we get like point five? Nope. I feel like close should be like a point seven. Yeah, it should be like. Yeah. At least we tried. All right. Should be close to one point. Yeah. All right. Um. So in your notes, here's what I want you to do. Go to page, you need a book. You need a book. Go to chapter six, please. That worksheet you guys handed out is homework. Okay. Calorimetry problem, combustion, that's due tomorrow. Right. So go to page two. Two fifty-three. Alright, I'm gonna give you, you know what, I'm gonna take a picture of this and you can do this for homework. Said, yeah, he said that with vigor. All right. Um, all right. All right. So you got that worksheet, and then I'm going to give you the, a picture here, and that's going to be it for tomorrow. We're going to do this right now. All right. It's not done. Right? If it's not done tomorrow, don't do that. Yep. If it's not done to like total perfection. Yeah, but this weekend is not going to be any better. You have like. We don't have to be here. We'll actually be here. Yeah, we'll have time. We start at 3 and we'll have to wait. Yeah. All right, fine, 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 fine. So that worksheet and what I'm about to send here, because while you're working, I'm going to send this. Just have it due for Monday. All right, um, write this down. Write the balance equation for nitric acid reacting with barium hydroxide. Nitric acid reacting with barium hydroxide. You got this, Taylor? Nitric acid, Nitric acid reacting with barium hydroxide. Um, well, I said write the balanced reaction for nitric acid and barium hydroxide. So yes, I want you to write it, Taylor. Okay. What's the chemical formula for that? What's nitric acid? Do you just know nitric acid? Someone in here better know. Is it? Is it NHCl? Oh, it's in the house. NHCl. And chewing. Someone in here better know. Is it NHCl? Somebody has failed here. Me or you? Or both of us? HNO3. HNO3. What? No, it's not. That's nitric acid. That's a lot. What's barium hydroxide? Do not so take my soul away. What is it? BAOH. The oh. BAOH2. BAOH2. The oh, oh, sorry. In parentheses, 2. All right. What's the product? 
H2O. Good. D-A-N-O. Two. Two. There you go. Come on, guys. Let's go. All right. Now, H-O-H. All right. The BANO32 is useless, but it's part of the balance equation. Uh, you gotta balance it though. What is it? D2O8. D2 water, then two, and uh, yeah. yeah. Two of these, two, two of these. Two. So here's why I'm giving you this problem. Most of the time, it's a one to one ratio, like H HCl and NaOH. The AP test tends to use HCl and NaOH because they're not trying to super confuse you with the ratios, they just wanna see you know how to do the calculations for delta H. But I'm going to show you a hard one because what if, what if this is on there, right? I want you to have a plan. So um, I'm going to give you some information here. I want you to calculate the delta H, just like we did yesterday with HCl and um, NaOH. I'm going to give you the molarities and the volumes. I'll give you the temperature change. Um, oh, actually, no, sorry. I'm going to give you, let's see, what should I do? Hold on. I'll, I'll be nice here. I'll, I'll, we'll do it this way. All right. So you have a point. Point six molar, um, four hundred milliliter solution of HNO three, and you have point three molar, four hundred milliliters of barium hydroxide. Plus, now I. Totally disregarded uh, sig figs. On an AP test, this would probably be po uh, 0 0.60, 400 point zero zero. Like they would give you much more significant figures. Not to worry about it right now, but I'm just throwing that out there. All right. So these two are mixed together. Um, if the initial temp um, is Eighteen point four six degrees Celsius, and after the reaction, the temperature is twenty two point four nine degrees Celsius. Calculate the value of delta H. Now they might abbreviate it RXN or neutralization. It's the same thing because this reaction is a neutralization. So I'll just put RXN, but it could also be neutralization. Oops. So that's what you're solving for. We did this yesterday with HCl and, and uh, NaOH. I'll do some of this with you to speed it up here. Um, well, kind of just out loud, you're going to do it. But first, you have to find the Q. So you're going to find, you're going to do Q equals MC delta T. Once you find Q, use the moles, right? Um, kilojoules per mole is, is this answer. Now, this is going to be in joules. When you do this calculation, it's in joules. You have to convert it to kilojoules, then you're gonna divide it by moles. So you're gonna take that, convert to kilojoules, divide by the moles. So, I'll let you do that in a minute here, but remember, density of your solution so when these two mix, you have barium nitrate and water, we're gonna assume the density is the same as pure water. What does that mean? It means the volume is the same as the mass. So you have 400 grams, 400 grams, so your total solution will have 800 grams, that's your mass, okay? Specific heat of water, we know that, 4.14, 4 4.18, yeah, just had a moment there. Delta T is easy, I gave it to you. So I'm making this a little bit easier than what I had written down. The homework problem I'm gonna send you do Monday is gonna be a little different, I'll explain that. So anyways, you have all your numbers for Q. The tricky part is how do you get the delta H? It's a two to one ratio. The number of moles is not the same. So, go ahead. So I kind of gave you, you know, half of it. See what you can do. And we'll go over it. And then uh, I guess briefly 
intro um, electro. <coughs> Q to be in Joule Joule Right? Yep. No, no, no. no. Joule. Q has to be in Joule because C is in Joules. Yeah. Okay. Joules per Kelvin mole. So once you get Q, that will be <laughs> Joules. You just have to convert that to kilojoules. Then you have to figure out yeah. your moles and then divide that number by the moles, and that's the answer to the question. I'll give you a hint about the delta H. Everyone can solve for Q. That's, that's easy. Um, find your moles of barium hydroxide. Find your moles of nitric acid. Again, that's easy. Um, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So, um, so I did this problem yesterday uh, without looking at the end. I just did it myself. Like I was, you know, like it was a test question. So I did it and I said, all right, well, which one is limited? Because limiting is the one that's going to dictate how much water we get, which is really what we're talking about here. Uh, but if it's balanced and you use the right proportions, there is no limiting. They're both going to react completely. So when you figure out your moles of this, it's 0.24. And you figure out your moles of this, it's 0.12. Well, that makes sense. You need twice as many moles of this as you do this. So in a limiting problem, what they would do is they would give you the exact same amount of both of these, same concentration, you'd realize this is limiting because you need twice as much. That's not what they're doing here. They're saying, okay, you have the perfect amount, all the H plus here, all the OH minus here will react and make what? So there is no limiting. So which moles do you use? So when you get your answer for Q, which is what, by the way? We should have that already. Yeah, I got 13488. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, say that again, Tristan, 13? 13476. 7, and that's joules. So it's 800 times 4.18 times the change in 10. Okay, everybody's good with finding Q? All right, so we got to convert this to kilojoules. That's 13.48. Kilojoules. That's four sig figs. That's good enough. Now we have to divide this by either 0.24 or 0.12, and that gives us the delta H. Which one do you think we're supposed to use? Because this here is 0.24 oops, moles of H plus. This one here is 0.12 moles of OH minus. Right? If you do 0.6 times 0.4. 0.3 times 
Only one of those is correct. So again, I did this yesterday myself without looking at the answer. I did both. And then I thought to myself, well, obviously only one of them is right. So which one are we supposed to use? And then I thought about it more. Right. So um, I didn't label that right. So this is point, point 0.12 moles of BaOH2, but really it's twice the moles of OH minus, right? And that's what I came to yesterday. I said, well, if this is neutralization, so let's think of titration curves. At the equivalence point, right? Right here. What's true? What's equal? H plus OH. Yeah, give me another word. The H plus and OH, but what OH? What OH plus? Contact. Not concentration. Moles. The actual number of particles. Moles of H plus equal moles of OH minus. Okay, so stay with me. There's a reason I'm dragging this out, not just telling you which one to use. You know this is 0.24. This is also 0.24 OH minus. But the way I actually thought of it yesterday wasn't what Nicole just said. I thought, if I have 0.2 moles of H+, plus, the only way I'm making water is if I have the exact same moles of uh, OH-. minus. So I didn't actually write this on my paper, but I said, oh, there's two of them. I need, I need two OHs for every one H+. Plus. So in other words, I only really have one mole number. I don't have 0.12. Again, I'm just being honest with you. When I was doing this, I wrote 0.12 and I, point, I wrote 0.24 and I'm like, well, how do I know which one to use? It, there is no 0.12. It's 0.24 for both. You have twice the moles of OH minus and you have um, 0.24 of H plus. So in other words, what Nicole said is actually the whole key here. There's two of them. So you do have the exact same number of moles, just like if you were to do HCl and NaOH. That's easier to, to, to figure out initially because it's just one to one. You don't have to think about it. This one you just need to kind of think about it a little bit more. It's still the same number of moles. So really, it's 0.24 on the bottom here. You divide those, and that is the answer. And the other way I thought about this was it always needs to be the higher number of moles, right? So if you're ever given a problem on an AP and it's a one to two or one to three or whatever, the greater number of moles. Um, whether it's the H plus or OH minus, the other one is going to have to supply the exact same number of moles. So I guess what I'm saying is, even if you miss that, and you still say, oh, well, I have 0.12, you need to go with the bigger number because that needs to be neutralized. So that's what you put here. So hopefully something I said there made sense. This is how you would do a problem if it wasn't one-to-one. -one. It's basically one-to-one, -one. it's just kind of sneaky one-to-one, -one. you have to think about it. So it's 0.24, and that's your answer. So the answer I have is negative uh, 56.2, but again, my number was a little bit higher. What did you guys get? 56.2. Oh. Negative. Negative, yeah. It's negative. Remember, this is positive because that's what the water is absorbing. The heat of neutralization is what's going on with those two. They're releasing energy. So you have to change the sign when you're talking about the chemicals. The water absorbs it. The chemicals lost it. So that's negative 56.2. All right. So uh, obviously we're, we're basically out of time. It was worth going over this again because I really want you to understand how to do this. All right. Because I, I just I haven't been good over the years of teaching this very well. So I hope you know you you have a better grasp on it in case there's one of these this year. So that's it. I'll uh, send a picture, but it'll be due Monday.